Let's take a look at solving quadratic equations using square roots. Square roots are another way that we can use to solve quadratic equations. We've got the other things such as factoring, uh, graphing, completing the square, uh, which will involve square roots, and the quadratic formula. So this is another method and it works very well for some s particular types of equations. So let's look at a few that I think square roots will work well with. This first one, first thing we want to remember is that being, something being squared and taking the square root are inverse operations. So remember, as we're solving equations, what we always want to do is use those inverse operations to get that variable by itself. So in this first one, what I've got going on is x is being squared, and the inverse operation of that would be taking the square root. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides of that equation. Remember when we're solving equations, if we do it on one side, we have to do it on the other side as well. Okay, now, one thing else that we need to remember here is when we take a square root, remember we're looking for what number multiplied by itself would give us this number which we have under the square root. Hmm, 81. What number multiplied by itself would get us 81? Well, 9 times 9 would do that. So it appears that our solution would be, because we take the square root of x squared is just going to be x, equals 9. Now, wait just a second here. Let's see. 9 times 9 is 81. Is there anything else that we could multiply by itself to get 81? Hmm. Yeah, there is. Negative 9. We can multiply negative 9 by itself, negative 9 times negative 9, and also get 81. So that leads us to the fact that when we take a square root like this, as we're solving equations, we have to put plus or minus out front of that square root. That's not a very nice plus or minus. Because we need to account for both the positive and the negative numbers, which will give us that one we took the square root of. Okay, let's take a look at this next one here. In this case, again, it, we've got the x squared term by itself, so let's go ahead and just take the square root of both sides. And when I do that, I have, well, x squared, the square root of that is going to be x. Then I have the square root of negative 49. Ooh, that's trouble. Remember, within the... Um, real number system we cannot take the square root of a negative number that gets us an imaginary number complex number so we're not going to be able to do this at this point so for this one we're going to say no real solutions because there aren't any numbers if we haven't gone into the complex and the imaginary numbers to, that we can use multiply by itself to get us negative 49. So watch out for those negatives under the square root. Okay, then let's go over here. On this top one, a key as we're solving equations is to get the variable by itself. So that still holds true. We want to get this x squared term by itself, and that we're going to do by clearing out the other things that are with it. So we've got minus 10 here. Let's start by getting rid of that. Do the opposite, of course. So plus 10, both sides of our equation. So then bring down what I have left on the left side here. I have 2x squared equals 22 times, or plus 10. Whoa, 22 plus 10 is 32. Then I've got this 2 times x squared. Got to get that rid of the 2. It's being multiplied there, so we're going to divide by 2. And then, I'll just bring over here what I've got. So I have x squared equals 32 divided by 2 is 16. Okay, now we're to the point where we just have the x squared piece. So I'm going to go ahead and take the square root of both sides. Remember when I do that, I have to account for both the positive and the negative. So this side's going to leave me with x. And the square root of 16 is 4 plus or minus 4. Because remember... 4 and negative 4, if we multiply by itself, is going to give us 16. Now, 
Remember also, when we're solving equations, we can take this back, put it in, and it should work. So I'm just going to throw these two in just to double check. And first of all, we'll take positive 4. So positive 4 squared would be 16 times 2 is 32 minus 10 is 22. Perfect. Then we have negative 4 squared. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. And 16 times 2 is still 32 minus 10. Again, 22. So there we are. All right, let's try this last one here. Again, you might immediately look at it and say, whoa, wait a minute, I can't take a negative square root, but is it really a negative square root? Well, I've got a negative over here. I've got to get that squared, the x squared thing by itself first. Remember, we can think of this as a negative 1 sitting there. So I could divide by negative 1 on both sides. That leaves me with just x squared, and that's equal to a negative divided by a negative gives me a positive 169. Then, okay, we're to the point where we need to take a square root of both sides. Get that x all in there. This is going to be plus or minus. Oopsie. Plus, hey, there it is. And minus x squared, the square root of that would be just x. Then we have plus or minus 13. And again, we could pop that back in and double check to make sure it works. Remember when you do that, if we put a 13 in here, just the 13 is being squared. Sometimes I notice people want to drag that negative in there and square that as well. No, 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 we can't do that. We have to square just the 13 for the order of operations. Because notice how the x part is taken to the power. We do that first. Then we're multiplying that by negative 1. So be on the lookout for that. All right, so solving quadratic equations using square roots works nicely in some situations like this. Our goal is we have to get that x squared piece by itself, and then we go ahead and take the square root of both sides. One thing we have to remember is when we take the square root, we have to account for both the positive and the negative situations because remember, not only is 9 times 9 81, but also negative 9 times negative 9 is 81. Hope this was helpful. Keep working hard on your math, and I know you'll do fantastic.